There is a, another story we absolutely have to address, and that is, of course, what happened to Christian Eriksen. Uh, the Danish FA has given us an update on his condition this morning, so he remains stable and still in hospital for further examinations. Uh, Dr. Sanjay Sharma is a sports cardiologist at St. George's Hospital who worked with Eriksen while he was playing for Tottenham, and uh, he joins us now. Great to have you with us. Thank you so much for speaking to us on England Match Day, Dr. Sharma. I mean, it must have been a, a shock to see a player that he, you've worked with go down in, in such a serious condition. So what was your initial reaction? I was horrified, to be honest. These events are uncommon. They're usually occurring around one in 50,000 sports people and usually in people with undetected cardiac faults of the heart muscle or the electrical system. As you know, uh, a talisman such as uh, Ericsson would have been tested on an annual basis. In fact, he was tested uh, in, in comprehensive detail when he signed for Spurs and was tested annually ever since then till 2019 when he left the club and his cardiac investigations were normal so it really did beg the question as to why it happened yesterday. Yeah, I mean, you've got plenty of expertise in this field. I'm sure there are many medical professionals making their assessment. Why do you think what happened to Christian Eriksen did happen? Well, there, there are several possibilities. One could be that it was an undetected cardiac condition. Some of the tests that we do perform during screening don't pick up every single thing, such as mild scar or mild inflammation in the heart muscle. Or it could be that it's something that developed after he was tested here in 2019, but I'm sure that Inter Milan would have tested him. Of course, we are going through the COVID-19 pandemic at the moment. Many uh, uh, athletes being affected with subclinical infection, whether something like that may have affected his heart muscle, is also being speculated, but I'm pretty sure that the Danish cardiologists will be doing their utmost best to try and find out what actually happened yesterday. The uh, medical team at the ground in Copenhagen uh, incredibly quickly, didn't they? One minute and 48 seconds before CPR would have administered. Just tell us how critical is that period of time immediately after he had fallen to the ground? I mean, I must congratulate the medical team. It was absolutely brilliant to see what happened. They were alert, they were diligent, they were on the pitch as quickly as possible and they clearly knew what they were doing. Time is myocardium, that's what we say in medicine. That means the longer that there is a time delay, the higher the chance that the heart muscle will never recover. In fact, for every minute that passes, the chances of uh, an individual surviving go down by between seven and 10%. So it's very, very crucial to keep the heart beating during these crucial moments and get the heart started as quickly as possible. Not just that, that the cardiac outcome will be good, but also that the other organs, such as the brain, remain well perfused so that the individual after survival remains healthy. The good news is, of course, they got him back within five minutes. He looked stable and I suspect his, his long-term outlook is going to be good. Uh, a lot of praise, therefore, for the Denmark captain, Simon Kjær, who got to uh, Ericsson first, cleared his airways, put him in the uh, recovery position. It's, it's something that we're all told, aren't we, when we do first aid training. But what about Ericsson now? What treatment will he be receiving and then in the coming days and weeks? Well, the ultimate aim now is to try and find out what happened, what went wrong. Um, they will be doing all the tests that uh, had been done whilst he was a player here and whilst he was playing in Italy. They will be checking specifically for other conditions that we don't usually look for, such as blocked arteries, because blocked arteries are very uncommon in players as young as Ericsson, but that will be something they'll be checking for. They'll be checking for scar tissue using rather complex scans, such as MRI scans. And then, of course, the ultimate thing is to, tr to treat him. And uh, depending on what they find, the treatment will vary. If it's a blocked artery, they'll try and open that up. If they don't find an obvious cause or if there is scar, they'll want to put in something called a defibrillator. This is a device that goes in to the chest uh, with a lead going to the heart that watches the heart day and night and delivers a shock if someone ever goes into a cardiac rhythm like this. So the aim really is to make sure that they preserve a good quality and quantity of life. That's going to be their foremost uh, goal at the moment. It was only nine years ago that, that we had a case like this with Fabrice Moamba, uh, of course. How much has football learnt from that? And do you think the stadiums and clubs are now uh, better prepared for emergency situations like those? 
Oh, very much so. I think we learnt a lot after the uh, tragedy that uh, we saw with Mark Vivian Foe, where clearly the uh, medical assistance w could have been a bit better. Uh, and uh, really the staff at Spurs in 2012 were to be commended. I, I do think that Fabrice Mwamba got excellent treatment. Uh, the only difference between Fabrice Mwamba and Eric Solberg was that it took a lot longer to get Fabrice out of the abnormal rhythm. So we have learnt a lot. I can only speak on behalf of the English Football Association that uh, all 92 clubs affiliated with the English Football League uh, do have good pitch side cardiac care where there are experienced doctors and paramedics that are able to get the heart started very, very quickly. Uh, this sort of thing should really be promoted, of course, in grassroots sports as well, where we could be slightly better prepared. Well, that's fantastic to hear. Absolute pleasure to speak to you. Thank you very much indeed, Dr. Sanjay Sharma. Pleasure. Thank you.